Mike on TechnoChat. My, my career goal, honestly, is to be a global brand um, in, a, in entertainment, news, and media. And um, I think the one highlight that I want to achieve is I want to host the New Year's Eve ball drop in New York City. Um, on the streets. So what will you do if you find out that your son is gay? The crowd will judge the crowd because I never plan on. Are you ready to be entertained? Super zoom your view and see your world up close. Techno Phantom 8. Capture your legend. Hello there and welcome to Techno Chat, where we essentially have a chat. I am Moses. So my guest this week is one whose sense of style is definitely a head turner. He's very fashion forward and definitely savvy about it. Actually, he's chuckling in the background, but he knows exactly who, who I'm talking about. Dinola Gray is he's an on-air personality and also a very, very interesting appeal, one to watch. He just might be the X factor that we all need, if you know what I mean. Hola. Hi. <laughs> I'm like, that was like such an introduction. I'm like, um, no, I'm not that cool, guys. I promise he's like, obviously. Really? <laughs> nah, you should, yeah, I mean, the background conversation we've been, we've been having is very warm and genuine. Hmm. Sadly, I couldn't film that. But I mean, no. I mean, I like, to, I like meeting people. You deserve and all the intros. Really. I should like shut up all the time because I'm like always asking questions. But I mean, people are interested. You have a curious like, mind. So everyone's like a star of their own movie. So it's like I want to find out what the main protagonist is up to. Well, that, this is about you, but, starring Dina Gray. Dina Gray by Dina La Gray for Dina La Gray in Dina La Gray's house. Yes, <laughs> it's all about me, guys. <laughs> all right. So let the conversations begin. Okay. Um, why are you not a fashion mogul or a fashion designer? designer. Why are you a media personality? Well, um, I mean, I, look I at this. Much, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I was just going to say that. I feel like this because I have worn these shoes ever. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. Um, I think it's, it's very important to know yourself. Mm. And uh, I, I, I never wanted to design. I like wearing clothes. And I really? Like, and I like being photographed in them, but I don't want to, like, make them. You know? I'd rather just, like, go to a store and then... Pick up well, you don't have to make them, but at least I you mean, could. No, I mean, I guess I could design you know. them. It's just that, like, it's uh, it's about knowing yourself. And I was raised with media. Like, my dad is in the media business as well. And um, growing up, I didn't really have a lot of friends, so I would just sit down and watch television for hours on end. And so, television was like my socialization. Hmm. You know, it, I've I always had an affected accent from when I was younger. Like, people will ask my mom, like, "What is wrong with your child? He doesn't sound Nigerian." And she was like, I don't know, he watches TV all the time. So, like, I had an American accent, which I didn't really know. I, I wasn't aware of it. But, but I, I realized that most of my references were pop culture references. Everything has to do with media. I would watch E! all the time. I would watch all, this, all these shows that were way more mature than my age. Hmm. And so I kind of just became engrossed in that world. That world raised me because I raised myself through... I mean, I'm not saying I had like negligent parents. They were amazing. I just like didn't have a lot of friends, and um, TV was my friend. So I'm guessing that's changed you now. Well, that has changed already. It changed when I, funny enough, when I went to university. My my first friend was when I was 17. My first actual friend, I was 17 years old. Like, oh. Like for somebody I would like call like my friend. Uh, yeah, 17. Wow. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> but I still, I really still think you should. You should think about doing something. So, I mean, no, the, so, so depending on what I said, I, I think... I mean, come myself. on, take a look at yourself. I know, but I have friends that... You I, literally I, look like Prince Charles of the 15th <laughs> century in 2017. The wash, the wash. <laughs> I, I like to think of this as a, like, nautical, like, captain slash um, pirate Or hybrid. prince. 
I would take Prince too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could see Prince that. in there. Definitely take it. I mean, but, you know, what's going on too. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have friends with better designers, and um, I, I've seen what they go through, and I just, uh, it just doesn't really appeal to me. I'd rather, like, meet all the designers in the world and, like, you know, converse with them, find out what makes them tick, and, like, wear their clothes. How would you describe your sense of style? Um, what inspires it, really? Before, it was very preppy, like, when I first... I just started dressing up properly, and I think uh, February 20th, 2009, I remember the day. Um... And was very preppy back then, and I, I would wear bow ties just to my classes all the time. I went to school in Texas, so when people were wearing plaid and cowboy boots, because there were cowboy boots there, I was the only person wearing like you know, bow ties and sweaters and blazers and like bright colored skinny chinos and stuff like that. Um, so it was very preppy for a long time, and then when I moved back, I was growing up. I moved to New York as well. And so it became slightly edgier hmm. as I matured. And I wanted to try new things and step out of my comfort zone on my box. And if I get to Nigeria, you can't really dress preppy all the time here because it's hot. So um, I, I adapted again and explored my more casual side. So it's really just, um, it's, I won't say it's all over the place. It's controlled ed edginess, I'll say that. That's my style. I've never seen you in, a, in an African fabric, though. What? No, stop. I wear um, <laughs> trad. I, I never wore trad before because I thought it made me look like a child. <laughs> but it wasn't a trad. It was just my, my face, generally. I'm okay. 20-something. I'm not going to say how old I am. But I'm not young. And trad just made me look like I was 12. So I didn't want to wear it. But I said I've been wearing Agbada's a lot. And um, mm. I have a, a couple of my favorite Nigerian designers do have a lot of print there as well. So. Interesting. Speaking about goals, uh, what is your ultimate goal, really? What do you want to be remembered for? My, my career goal, honestly, is to be a global brand. Um, in, a, in entertainment, news, and media. And um, I think the one highlight that I want to achieve is I want to host the New Year's Eve ball drop in New York City um, on CNN. So uh, let's talk about your interview at Cool FM. Oh, God. Aha. Uh -huh. okay. He has a clue no, where okay. I'm going. Dainola, and here's my next question Have you ever dated anyone's husband? Brad Pitt. What you guys don't know is we're actually playing a game. So there's this game, it's called, um, I think, yes, no, maybe. You can't say yes, no, or maybe. And so the rules of the game is you're not allowed to say those words. And he's asking you close-ended questions, you know? So mm -hmm. questions like, can either only answer yes, no, or maybe too. So he will get back and forth for a while. Then right before he asked me, now, I don't know what phrases goal was with my own personal question. But I'm getting to that. But before he asked me that question, he asked Koye, have you ever said with anyone's wife? Do you understand? And Koye was like, he answered in a different way. Now that day was the day that Brad and Angelina announced their divorce. divorce. Mm. So when he asked me that question, I was like, oh, this is funny. I was like, oh yeah, Brad Pitt, that's why they're getting divorced. Like That was like my thought process. And I didn't think anything of it. And then I got out of the <clears throat> station and then my phone is blowing up and everyone's like oh my god how could freeze do that i'm like what did he do <laughs> they're like no i think you posted it right no i didn't I, no I, I, kayla had my phone oh so kayla only had my phone and she was she posted it on my, on my snapchat so while i was talking and um i didn't i was like yeah sure like we're having fun we're pr I'm promoting 355 wednesdays that was the thing that i was doing with um, k10 at the time and, um, like, I didn't see anything wrong with it. And then I was like, to calm everybody down, I was like, guys, it's fine. Like, you, you, don't, you don't think Freeze was, trying, wait, to, was I, trying to say something? So the thing is, whether or not he was trying to say something, it's really none of my business. Like, I know who I am as a person, and I know what I stand for, and I know that I, there's just, like, no space for negativity in my life. People went after Freeze. He put up an apology. People also went after you. I don't know if they did or not because I didn't check it. Allow me to inform you. Please tell me what were they um, You know, um, one um, some of the tabloids said, "Oh my God, did Daniela Gray just come out oh as gay?" That is crazy to me. Like, I mean, I, you did say you well, you were well, having yeah, an affair like, with Brad Pitt. Of course, of course. <laughs> but I mean, first of all, 
Of course that didn't happen. <laughs> Let's start there. Well, you never know. No, please. I was in, I was on seats <laughs> the entire time I was in Nigeria. A, B, like, it was a joke. And it was taken out of context, as most things are. And I think it was a slow news day in Nigeria. And then Bella Neda carried it. And mm. then Nida Kiji carried it. And it was this whole thing. And I was like, ah. Uh. And it was really, really awkward because I had to come back home and explain that to my parents because it was such a big deal. And that was the hardest thing I had to do because it was me and my brother. And I was like, this is so stupid. Like, it was a game. We were just playing a game. Now, whatever phrases in touch were, even though I, I would like to live in a world where I believe they were pure and innocent, that's just what I choose to believe. Whatever, ha- what, whatever the case, I just put it out there, good vibes only. Like, yeah, yeah. If, if anybody wants to come for me, that's fine. That's your prerogative. It is up to me to decide how I react to it. And you treat adversity or things like that with kindness and with understanding and with empathy. Because once so, you know where something's coming from, you're automatically in control of that situation. So honestly speaking, are you saying that you had no idea that Freeze was trying to ask you questions around your because perceived sexuality? I honestly and truly, honestly, 95% I would say I really had no idea. Because we were playing a game. To me, it seemed everything seemed so innocent. It was a natural... Like, we were, just, we were just going back and forth, you know? So I didn't even have time to process it. Until after it happened, then I was like, you know what? You know what? <laughs> Maybe I would have just there, stayed there is mute. Some tr- no, no. I will always be myself. I will always be myself at any given point. If anybody has a problem with that, then they don't have to follow me, you know? I, look, what I stand Can for Can I give you a high five for that? Authentic, <laughs> authenticity. Like, I'm always going to be myself. Like, I, there's only one me. There can only be one me. What would you say is your biggest and your finest impression? Impression. Impression, you know, like how people make impressions of others. Do you guys there must you? be someone that I you... Know, are, I don't know if people watch Family Guy here. Okay. But, like, I watch Family Guy. And which, so which character? Stewie Griffin and Cleveland. I can do both. Their voice. Can you please do that for us, please? Oh, I God. mean, your fans are dying to see that. I don't know if they know the cartoon, because if they don't know it, then... Family awkward. Guy, come on. Yeah, Don't like worry, I'll guy. play it for them. Yeah, I'll do, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll do Cleveland's voice, hold on. <clears throat> it's been a while. Hmm. Do you want me to direct you? No, it's fine. Okay. Oh, Peter, you tickle me in a way that if Loretta tickled me in that way, I'd say, oh, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> and then Stewie's going to say a bit more, um, so, uh, so, uh, Brian, you are going to gonna write a book there? You are going to, going to... Go away, a fat man. Okay, did you actually do the voiceover for this? No. Are you, are you just... That was also Seth MacFarlane. I know, I just watched an embarrassing amount of, of that cartoon. So. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That was amazing. That was amazing. Have you ever considered acting? When you should mention that, because I've <laughs> actually been approached to audition for a couple of things. Okay. And I was like, I'm not an actor, but I like movies. There you go. So I will try it. What you good at? What you have a passion for? I don't Find have a passion the balance. for it, but, I, but let's see. <laughs> I mean, I, come on, you grew up with TV. I am so. very animated, I would say that. So mm. let's see if it translates. And if it doesn't, then I, at least I tried, right? Fingers crossed. Yeah, at least you tried. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Dela, yeah, for you. doing this. Thank you for your time. You know, thank you for bringing us into this amazing, <laughs> you know, palace of it's yours. Palace house, yeah. <laughs> it's not my house. Don't do it. It still is your house. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> but thank you for I'm having us. Yeah. <laughs> right. All right. So that was Dela Gray, and um, now we'll move up to the streets to find out what Effie is talking with the people. Super zoom your view and see your world up close. Techno Phantom 8. Capture your legend.
is so right here in the street of Lagos. I will be asking people questions on what they will do if they found out that their son is gay. I can't wait to see people's reaction. <laughs> if you get home and you find out that your son is gay, what would you do? <laughs> Honestly speaking, I'm going to beat L out of him. Ah, uh, put some pepper on his penis. Yeah, a lot of pepper. Ah, uh, I'm going to beat him seriously. Next, I found him doing it again. Ah, uh, I'm uh, straight to police station, though. Uh, uh, police station, go and report your son. Uh, yeah, they should take him far from me. He's a devil child. So, what would you do if you find out that your son is gay? What would you do? Uh, you have to pray to your God so that he will be healed or oh, any other thing. Have patience. God forbid. Gay? It will never be possible in Jesus' name. So what would you do? It will not be possible at my own hand. Well, I will, I will try to call my God. Now my God, I will, I will, I will intervene for. I cannot intervene for human being because we cannot do anything. Only my God will intervene something over there. Oh boy, now I'll be there though. That cry will just the cry because I never plan. No. Uh, I will disown that son. I will totally disown him because it's not, uh, you know, the Bible for a man to meet a man or to a woman to meet a woman. It's, I say, it's a, it's a taboo. Super zoom your view and see your world up close. Techno Phantom 8. Capture your legend.